I'm Saba Tahir. I'm Tomi Ariemi. And we're here to interview each other about all the things we don't yet know. Yeah. Yes, so. Okay, so Tomi, you've written this book, Children of Blood and Bone, and it is really groundbreaking in so many ways. It's a young adult fantasy. It's inspired by Nigeria, which is where your parents are from originally. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I'm very yeah. curious about your inspiration for it. Well, it's funny when you say inspired by. It's like it's actually inspired by an ember in the ashes. And I wish <laughs> I was joking. I wish I was joking. So I'm, I'm going to have to start there because reading an ember in the ashes, I was like, whoa. First, it was like we can get book seven and book one. Second was like, we can go into this whole new world. And then third was like, we could go with these epic and complex characters and we could mess some stuff up. I'm censoring myself, but I was like, it, got, it gets crazy a lot. And I was like, nothing is held back. So that was, I think my first, first inspiration was like, an ember was both a lesson and permission to be like, you can take readers into this big world and you can tell a really big story. I'm so um, And it can be the first book. Cause I used to be like, no one's gonna ride with me. Like, I can't just take you into Orisha. I can't start there. But then mm -hmm. you're, I was like, oh no, we can start there. Um, so first it was being like, okay, I can write this big story with this big magic and these like, these epic plot lines. And so then it became kind of natural to me where it's like, oh, and I can put like, my world in there because right. I was like okay now you can write this big story but what does it look like because I felt like there was such a clear vision in an ember in the ashes and I felt the same thing with Red Queen but I was like what's my world right. and then I was just like oh it could be with these Arisha because I discovered them like maybe eight months before I started writing and so it was after I read an ember and I was thinking I was like oh there's my world I was like I wanted to go into that world but I didn't have the story before okay um so yeah it started there but then discovering that the Orisha were a part of my heritage, right. it kind of naturally led into, okay, this doesn't just have to be like West African, this can be Nigerian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they can speak Yoruba and mm -hmm. they can have the geles and mm -hmm. you know, the like the food, they can eat jollof rice. And so it became it was really fun because it was the first time I wrote a story that was so personal, not just in the nature of the story, but in the world. Because, right. you know, I'm really grateful that my parents are around to see it, mm -hmm. but I'm more grateful that it's not, like the first book I tried to get published wasn't as personal. Mm -hmm. um, so for this one, it's, I love that they can see it and like see their names and see the names of like their mom and their dad and right. see, you know, like our aunts and uncles and our food and like kind of see the culture that and the heritage that they gifted me like in this whole world that now a lot of people are having fun in because it feels like being like, hey, come to my Thanksgiving. Right. right. We don't have turkey. We don't have turkey. No, but no, we got for good sure. rice. <laughs> so. No, like it is it is a really cool thing to be able to put that in a book. I did it a lot with names. Right. Yeah. By the way, that was a really nice thing that you said. And actually if I was not brown, I would blush. <laughs> I am brown, so you guys can't see it. Yeah, but I call my it face black got all girl hot. blushing. <laughs> yes. My face got all so, hot. Yeah, you should say so. brown girl blushing. Brown girl blushing, yeah. yes. So we were talking about um, about the world building, mm -hmm. and for me, it's a lot through names. And yeah. so I actually, on the map of Ember, there are three cities in um, the tribal lands, mm -hmm. and they are um, Taib, Saad, um, and Aish. And those are my three favorite cousins. Oh. Um, it's, it's based off of their names. Their, yeah. their names are Sadia, Aisha, and Taiba. Yeah. And it was, that's where, you know, and then using like my cousin's name, her name is Sana, like my other, yeah. I have a lot of cousins. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but just <laughs> kind of mining my own family yeah. for names and, and also for like, you know, physical characteristics and stuff. I have a very, um, a diverse family in the sense that like some people are very very light skinned and yeah. some people are much more dark skinned it just sort of depends on where you are in the family and Pakistan is a, a really like a melange of sort of skin tones yeah. and eye colors and it's just very very mixed you kind of don't know what you're going to find in a family or what's going to come out yeah. so um, I also use a lot of that. One of the things I've found really interesting is um, kids coming up to me and being like well how come one of your characters is sort of dark skin and one of them is, is light skin and I'm sort of trying to explain to them that like, yeah. this is my world, right? Yeah. Like, this is my family. I'm just trying to represent my family. So there is something really meaningful about being able to 
even if it's just something you know, like yeah. even if the names are just something you know, being able to sort of connect that to. And to know too that when your cousin sees that, like my auntie, one of my aunts, her name is Auntie Yemi, and like Yemi is the first character's name you see in the yep. book besides Zaley. Mm -hmm. um, and this this is an aunt who like helped raise me. And mm -hmm. you know, so it's like even, if it's just a character for everyone else, but for my aunt, you know, that's, and I know one day someone's going to analyze me and be like, I don't think Tommy liked her aunts or her mom because they're oh, named yeah. after very conflict. But I was like, no, that's just what stories are, like stories are about conflict. So if your name's in the book, it's probably not going to be for a positive reason. Um, but yeah, I like just knowing that one, that, that they feel kind of immortalized yep. in, you know, yeah. in the story, whether it's like one character on the page or like this land that everyone's like in. in yeah. Right. And like all the things you can draw from like my, my mother used to tell me stories of gin. When yeah. I was little. She will still if if I'm having like a bad run of luck. Yeah. Right, if stuff is not going great for me. Um, my my mother will say someone's put the evil eye on you. Yeah. And you need to break it. And this is how you do it. And she has like this whole system that she uses to break the evil eye. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know, it all comes from sort of all, obviously her own background, her own heritage. But when I was little, she would tell me these stories. Yeah. And I think part of it was like, I want you to be afraid and be a good girl. Like, so yeah. this gin's going to get you if you don't, you know, if you're not, if you're not good. But, um, but those stories, you know, those, th that history ends up sort of staying with you. And I think in so many ways it ends up becoming part of you in ways you don't expect. Yeah. Right? Like now I am... You know, I'm very, very careful of the evil eye, right? I'm just like, I don't want, I don't want to piss off any spirits. You know, I don't want to make them mad. It's funny seeing this because some people have said with Children of Blood and Bone, they're like, oh, this is my first time learning about the Orisha, which is what I would expect because I, like, it you was know, a surprise right? to me and it was in my own backyard. But I feel like with An Ember in the Ashes, that was my first time actually being like, oh, this, like, gin. I right. mean, like, this, like, here are stories mm -hmm. and here are, like, both like here's magic and monsters that I'm not familiar with because we're kind of told the same, you know, same story yeah, the elves same stories again and again and, and again. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, it's um, it's a it's a fun thing to be able to delve into that and to tap sort of mythologies that maybe people don't necessarily know or like understand. Yeah. Right? So like this idea that jinn are created from smokeless flame, right? That's like something that's in the book. And um, that's definitely a mythology that you see all across um, uh, the Muslim world. Yeah. Really. Um, and then um, the other sort of members of the magic, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there, some of them have sort of very specific, there's ghouls and then there's, um, there's efforts. And those are supposed to be very specifically one one group, right? But then there's other groups, and I'm like totally like, hinting <laughs> at spoilers here. But, yeah, you know, and it's and all of it sort of is part of the same thing. But it's fun to be able to draw on these little mythological like notes that come straight from. I feel like the we're culture. gonna get a lot of it in a Reaper too. Yeah, you because, get more. Yeah, because you know, because yeah. I was seeing, and I was like, okay, we're fully getting into this world, and it's not. And I think too, I was talking about what I love is. Even when you're presenting, like the monsters, you do it in a way where you're like, okay, but are they really monsters? You right, know, you're like, not... yeah, you know, like, are they? I was like, if this person is doing something like for their family, and this person is doing something for their family, I was like, does it change just because this person is made out of like smoke and darkness? Right, and so, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, it's it's it comes down to sort of how people of color have been treated in so many ways, yeah. right? So I talked, um, I've, I've spoken to, uh, to students and to readers about this idea that as a kid I grew up in this place where we were kind of seen as the monsters, yeah. right? We were seen as like these negative people um, or these bad people and it was because we looked different. It was because we believed different things. It was because we ate different, our food was different. And, and there was a dehumanization in that, right? That allows people to treat you like trash because they think you're trash. Like that's what they believe. So that's a big part of this is, you know, sort of so when, you, when you look into human history, it is really difficult to actually figure out in so many cases who, who the good folks were, right? Because you can really see some of this stuff from all sides. Yeah, I'll always find a way to like, love and agree with my antagonist. I won't yeah. even call them villains because I don't think they're villains. Right. But yeah, it's like I'll find a way to be like, okay, this is why I would be on your side. Right. Um, and this is why even though you make this character's life like hell, you know, you're not you're not doing it for right. reasons that I wouldn't want to do the same thing. Right. So I'm always trying to like agree with all of my characters. Right. Uh, but it, usually at different points of revision, that way it's like everyone is it. So because if I did that at the same time, I would be very confused. No, I mean, yeah. but it, it is so important, right? To be able because they're the, like 
your villains or your antagonists are yeah. the heroes of their own story. Yeah. If you don't see them as the heroes of their own story, they're going to fall really flat. Yeah. Right? And maybe you don't see their motivation, right? So um, in Reaper, there's a lot more about the Commandant. Having a character like the Commandant and being able to empathize with her. Even in an ember, I feel like you dropped like one or two lines in an ember where I was like, you've been evil the whole time, but now I'm wondering what happened to you. Well, and like, I mean, and where do you come from? Exactly. And I was like, and this is also the world you live in. And what would you have to do to be a woman in this? One? You know, we only have Helene, um, right? And you know, so it's like we already know what it's like, like at least to a degree, what it's like. So I was like, what must you have gone through to even get here? To get here. And I was like, and can we? Yeah, I just love when it's like you you think you know someone, and then you peel back the layers, and you're like, wait, do I agree with you though? It's the same thing in Children of Blood and Bone. I think that, in particular, when you have these characters, you know, one character who really, he's just trying to do the right thing. Yeah. He's really just trying to do the right thing. And then you have these other characters who are trying to survive. They're yeah. trying to live. And it's just like, let me live. Like, I think that that juxtaposition creates the strongest, most fascinating conflict, you know, and I think that you did that so well. So um, uh, we're, I will probably mention that I sent Tomie a copy of Reaper, but it was under very specific conditions. It was a down payment on Children of Blood and Bone 2, so. Which, like, I would, like, make. I would Maybe do, deal. like, you didn't even have to do it. You could have sent me, like, here's a gift certificate for some chicken nuggets. I'd be like, <laughs> you get anything <laughs> you want, somebody. <laughs>